In this video, I'm going to do another quick tutorial and I am going to be looking at the uh, accounts bar. And I wanted to just go over essentially like the way Quicken organizes the accounts bar and the sort of hierarchy um, of how it displays the accounts. I should say this video is pretty specific to Quicken Home and Business, though I think ultimately it would make sense for most of the versions, but I use Home and Business, so it's mostly uh, looking at that. But I also talk about the different ways to uh, label um, and create the organization of the accounts in the account bar, i.e. is it a business account, a brokerage account, a real estate account, a personal account, etc and show you how you can change those settings and sort of explain the whole um, bird's eye view of that. So I think it'll be helpful for anyone getting started and we'll definitely like uh, clear up any mysteries related to the account bar. I'm Joe DeSanto, by the way. I'm an independent CFO and business consultant. I actually spent most of my career in Los Angeles building a few multi-million dollar businesses and I've since semi-retired and now I help other uh, businesses and individuals manage their money and plan better for their future. So if you're interested in small business, personal finance, and real estate advice, please subscribe to the channel. Thanks. So in this video, as I said in the opener, um, just going to give a bit of a top level view of accounts, how they work, the different the difference between the types of accounts, how they're organized, and so on. And obviously, that'll be best done by looking at it right here on the screen. So um, I've set up a couple tutorial files that I'm going to jump between, um, but if you were to set up a new file in Quicken, uh, you'd probably get to this screen here, and you know it would say add account, and it would take you into your new uh, file. So when I say file, by the way, I mean a database file. Quicken is, I guess you could say, unique nowadays in that it's not completely web-based. You actually have a database file on your computer, and I kind of say Quicken's like a legacy program <laughs> that it's been around for so long. Uh, you you know, I, I think when I first got it, I went to uh, Staples and bought it like on a CD. Um, so back then, there was no internet, and you had everything in a database file. Well, slowly, Quicken's kind of moving towards being a web-based thing, but I, they're, they're kind of bridging the gap with their main product here in that it has a database file, but it also now can be sunk to your... Uh, online account for Quicken and then you can look at it and access it through a web portal and you can actually do stuff on the web portal as well. My assumption is over time it'll all just be moved to being completely web-based but we will see. But anyway once you um, get going here you're pretty much gonna have no accounts um, and what we're gonna do is set up uh, some dummy accounts. I, in, a, in another video I actually walk you through setting up an account and syncing it to the bank and downloading transactions and all of that. Uh, this is kind of a video that should be come before that where I just kind of walk you through how the accounts work. But um, for example, if I just uh, set up an account, now if I wanted to set up a, a, a live account that I was going to sync, I would be setting up a connected account. What I'm going to do for illustration purposes is just set up an offline account. Now, this option is here because you might want to have an account that's not connected to something online. Um, like for me, mostly that is just like my mortgage accounts and stuff like that. Some of the, some mortgages you can, you know, connect to an online thing, but I just find it's not worth the hassle. Um, but in this case, I'm just going to set up a quick checking account um, that is not connected to anything. Uh, it's the first option here is personal transactions, so I'm going to explain what these are over time. Uh, I'm going to hit next. I'm just going to keep this as the start date because, again, this is just for illustration purposes. And I'm going to finish. And what it's going to do is throw up this account here under this uh, top category, banking. Now, I'll admit, Quicken is a bit confusing in that what is considered personal accounts for some reason shows up under this um, heading banking. It really should say personal in my opinion. 
but it says banking and I think that is just sort of a legacy thing and probably over time that'll change but uh, what I'm gonna do next is add more accounts I'm gonna add some real estate accounts business accounts and so on and then this will start to show you know fill out and we can kind of look at the hierarchy so I'm gonna add another account here I'm just gonna do an offline account now I'm gonna say checking again but what's going to make it a business account, quote unquote, is just selecting business transactions. Okay. And I'm going to name this uh, Biz Checking. And I'm going to hit next. And there we go. Okay. So what's happened here is there is this second subheading here now called business. And so being this is home, quick and home in business. Over here on the left, there is a distinction of the way we view accounts that are for personal, for business, and then also real estate, and also just personal assets. Now, the truth is that ultimately there is no difference between both of these checking accounts I set up. The only difference is that I happen to be selecting to view, you know, kind of label one as a business account. But from, you know, the ultimately, you know, that account there is agnostic. The only thing, again, that makes it business is that I'm labeling it business versus personal. And I want to show you something that will maybe better illustrate that. So if I right click on the account, I can edit many of its features. Um, and over here in the display, Right now, I am displaying this account as what's called a spending account, which also means checking account, and I'm displaying it as a business. However, if I wanted to say I was like, ah, I made a mistake, that shouldn't be business. I can come over here and change the um, place where it's labeled or how it's labeled to personal, and look, it'll move under banking. Now again, banking should be thought of as personal. It's, it's confusing. I wish they would change that. Um, okay, so now I'm going to change that back to spending or aka checking it probably should say and to business. So you can see like again the, the account itself in Quicken is agnostic. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't matter whether it's business or personal. It, it really is only a matter of label and organization. Okay, so I'm gonna add a few more accounts so we can get um, one for each kind of category. Um, I'm gonna add a credit card account here. We'll make it a personal credit card. Now I'm gonna add an uh, offline account. I'm gonna do credit card again but I'm going to call it a business credit card. Okay, so now I have a business, a checking business credit card, personal checking, personal credit card. I'm going to add a, a personal savings account so you can see how that sort of gets uh, Categorize. Now, you might notice some of these gray lines here. I don't know. The purpose of these lines are really more for organization, I think. Uh, maybe like deep in the code of this, those do or something. But basically, um, Quicken calls the spending accounts, aka checking accounts, it kind of puts them in one uh, area. If it's a savings account, it puts a gray line and then puts the savings below. And then if it's a credit card account, it puts another gray line and puts it below that. Now, if I were to add a second credit card in here, we'll call it credit card two. It's just gonna add it under that gray line. So groups credit cards, in a, in a section under a heading, it groups savings accounts in a section and it groups checking accounts in a section. Now, the truth is, again, like some, uh, the, the fact that this is a checking account, it, it functions exactly the same way as this savings account. 
it's really more just a matter of labeling and the way Quicken organizes it. Uh, credit card accounts are functionally operate the same way as um, checking accounts in terms of the fact that um, it's a check register. You can transfer money in, transfer money out, expense, you know, spend money as an expense, um, deposit money as income. Most accounts in Quicken, checking, savings, credit card, and even um, non-labeled asset and, and liability accounts, which I'll explain, all kind of operate the same way. They just operate as a check, like a check register, essentially. Um, the accounts that actually have unique functionality, and I'll explain those in another video, are the investment accounts. The investment accounts um, have a whole bunch of specific functionality related to types of investments and allows you to be very detailed in how you input information and basically gets you what I call transactional level detail on your investing accounts. But I'll do a whole video on investing accounts at some point. Um, okay, so we've added a couple more personal accounts. Now, <clears throat> I'm gonna add a checking account, but that is in the rental property labeling area. So you can see that. Actually, I'm gonna call it real estate checking. Now what this does, and, and again, this is Quicken Home and Business, which also includes kind of real estate functionality. Not every version of Quicken will, will give you this organizational breakdown. The funny thing is, is like a lot of what the Quicken Home and Business does is it gives you more organizational breakdown to your account setup. Um, I could I could likely do almost everything in a in a other version of Quicken, but not be able to like organize it uh, in as good a way. Now I will say though that Quicken Home and Business does add some features that other programs don't have besides organizational features. For the business, it allows you to have accounts payable and accounts receivable. And for the real estate area, it has a whole bunch of tools around organizing and tracking your real estate, keeping track of your tenants and leases and all sorts of stuff. Honestly, the rental property the rental property aspect of Quicken used to be its own version of Quicken. <laughs> um, so they kind of merged rental property in with Quicken Home and Business. Um, so it's kind of nice. I don't actually use a ton of the, the rental property features because I feel like in some ways it's almost more work than is worth it in terms of like, but you know, I don't, most of my real estate over the years, I haven't managed myself, a management company has dealt with. So I'm not like keeping track of every lease and every tenant and all sorts of information about them. But I've scoured a lot of the rental property uh, options, and maybe I'll do a video about that at some point as well. We will see. Um, okay, back to this. So I've added a real estate checking. Now, I'm going to add now a brokerage account, okay? Um, Quicken now offers you two options for brokerages, complete investing and simple investing. I will have to explain those in a separate video. Um, I'm going to go with complete for now. I'm going to call it brokerage. The default is personal transactions. Now, I'll, I'll show you the, the difference here and why, again, Quicken, I think, needs to improve some of the way it organizes this. But if I do personal, it creates an account. Oop, i got to finish a few more steps here. Um, go, no, it's not each one. It puts this account under investing, okay? But if I go make another brokerage account and I say that it's for business, let's see. 
lots of options with the brokerages account so I will explain those as I said in yet another video <clears throat> now you'll notice here if I make a brokerage account that's labeled business it puts it under the business but if I make a brokerage account labeled personal it makes its own category of investing here which to me, it's like, why do it that way? I think you should have every the way anything ends up in business, this should be called personal, and then you're going to have everything in personal. Um, but I think, again, it's probably because they have multiple versions of Quicken. They built the original version one way. They added the business part another and, like, never really worked out some of that. But Tim, the, part of the reason I wanted to make this video was that I find the way some of this is set up confusing uh, and it requires some explanation um, now I will show you this where which is what leads me to think they're working on improving some of this this is a new feature recent feature called rearrange accounts and it allows you to um, change the way um, it is showing these accounts here but it doesn't allow you to like rename, you know, uh, the section, but it allows you to move them around. So, there you go. Um, so my guess is over time, we're gonna be able to rename a lot of these things and you can organize it in the way that makes the most sense to you. Um, but I have found that helpful because I like to see all my stuff um, kind of in a hierarchy of like where my money comes in and how it gets spent. So my money comes in to my business essentially first so I always like to see my business at the top here. You know, it's like business banking, personal banking, uh, maybe real estate, then investing, and so on. But, you know, everyone's a little different on how they like things organized. Okay, I'm gonna add yet another account here. When that saves. Called, um, well, I'm going to actually add a loan account, but I'm going to do it in a different way. I'm going to do uh, just a, a kind of a generic asset account and a generic liability account as opposed to a home loan or a home equity line of credit. Now, ultimately, um, the difference between what I would call here a generic liability and a liability for a property or a car is these loan accounts have some features built into them where you can kind of play with calculators like if you want to pay the loan off quicker, like you could put in, you know, what if I put in more principal? They built in some of these kind of calculator things into the loan account themselves. I don't like that because it just adds a bunch of like extra visually stuff to it that gets in the way, you know, in my opinion. So whenever I do a home and a home loan, I just do a generic asset for the home and then generic liability for the mortgage. Um, so FYI, I can, I'll get into that yet, yet again in another video because like each of these kind of categories of stuff, you know, you can kind of go deep and get into, get into another video. <clears throat> okay, so again here, I've, the assets and liabilities show under, show up under property and debt. However, you can, I guess, ultimately look at this as business is going to be business, and you can have um, checking, savings, credit card, investing accounts, and assets and liabilities under business. 
rental property is kind of like another business and under it you can have checking savings credit cards assets liabilities investing accounts all under rental property and then banking investing and property and debt those labels are essentially all personal accounts so I'm going to continue on here to, uh, to do an illustration. Uh, I can go ahead and add an asset that is a business asset. And it's going to create a property and debt sub account under business. And essentially that's the equivalent to this kind of account, but this is personal. So if you can follow what I'm saying, like to me it would be a lot better if they just had a business main header, a rental property main header, and a personal main header, and they did the sub breaking down exactly the same in each category, but they do it this way, and then, and you can't relabel these, these group headers yet. But I'm gonna keep adding um, accounts so we can I can continue to illustrate this distinction here um, so hopefully it'll it will save you some confusion as you're setting up Quicken okay so now I have a checking uh, you know what I'm gonna I'm gonna add a savings account for business too so we have, ooh, I think I should make you, excuse me. Um, is savings. Okay, so as you can see, we have biz checking and biz savings. It kind of does the gray bar separation, biz credit card. We have one um, biz brokerage. Um, anal, so I'm going to change the name of that so all this stays consistent. And then we have a biz asset and biz liability. Okay. Now I'm going to. Now I could do this very same thing for real estate, which I'm not going to bother to do, but I can have this real estate section look. Exactly like this. I could have a checking account in there. I could have a savings account in there. I could have a credit card. I could have brokerage in real estate. I could have an ass assets and liabilities. Um, so wait, let me do this. I'm gonna I'm gonna bring real estate up here. To kind of illustrate the point that. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna do it slightly different way here. I'm gonna put all the personal accounts, what would be considered personal, up top. Okay. So if you organize it this way, you could be looking at this as personal banking, which would have checking, savings, and credit cards, personal investing, which would have your brokerage accounts and, and could have a 401k or IRA. Actually, I'm going to illustrate that. Uh, I'm going to do a 401k account. Okay. Now, the distinction of a 401k or a SEP, SEP or something like that is that it's an investment account that is post-tax. Uh, I'm sorry, pre-tax, excuse me. It's going to have, um, name of this account, we'll just call it 401 k Employer name, self, current employer of my account. It's got a few more options. Would you like track loan against account? No, but if you had a 401k loan, it does allow you to do track your 401k loan, which is pretty cool. Uh, I have no... Uh, securities in there right now. Do you want to start paycheck set up set up your paycheck now? I'm gonna say no. 
and something to note here so a taxable brokerage or taxable investment account is above the line here a a pre-tax or retirement account doesn't have to be pre-tax retirement any tax any retirement account uh, would be below the line so they separate regular accounts and retirement accounts okay so personal banking personal investing personal property and debt you know and this might be your house as an asset and then you would have a corresponding loan but you could also have any kind of asset you could have a car you could have jewelry whatever you want to put as part of your net worth that has a value you could put in here as an asset um, and the the loans don't necessarily have to have to be tied to an asset they could just be a loan that you have to I don't know your dad um, okay um, moving on down business though the way they organize businesses they have the banking see banking banking correlation but banking under business investing investing correlation investing under business property and debt property and debt correlation but under business so they have all these same three cat general categories but they if if you label them as business they're going to put them all under business okay and the exact same thing can happen for real estate you can have a banking under real estate investing under real estate and property and debt under real estate so it's it's interesting how they've kind of created the hierarchy and the separation of business and, and rental real estate versus your personal stuff but that is how they do it it's a little confusing which is why I wanted to make this video uh, and sort of explain it and let's see um, Again, in any of these accounts that you make, they're sort of agnostic. So if you make one and you, you say it's for real estate and it's, it's under this real estate area and you're like, oh man, I messed up. I didn't want that to be real estate. I wanted it to be business. You can edit, hit right click on it, edit the account, go to display options. And under here, you're going to have the option to uh, change the account type and change the category under which it is sitting so if I change this to personal it's gonna look move that real estate checking under here under banking if I were to change it to business it's gonna move it under here under business banking and then there's gonna be no real estate subcategory uh, I think that is, is pretty well clarifying what's going on here. Um, so that's it for this video. That's the left-hand bar. That's how it organizes accounts. Um, that is how you can um, kind of edit accounts and change which section they're in. I'm going to move this back to real estate or rental property. I can even change this to a savings or an asset or whatever, but this is kind of weird like being this this uh, account I'm changing as a checking account you wouldn't necessarily like if you just change it to be under investments you can do that you can have a bank account that's an investment account but it's not automatically gonna make it have the functionality of a brokerage account so FYI and um, you'll have to go find my video about the distinction of brokerage accounts um, to get a further explanation on that. Okay, hope that was helpful. Let me know if there's any way I can help you. And if there's a particular topic of Quicken that you'd like me to do a video on, you can you know, send me a comment or email me, joe at playladder.com. Talk to you later.